So a couple of years back, I made a video about taking 16 different inputs by just using one single GPIO pin of the microcontroller board. But if you look at that video carefully, then you'll come to know that there are actually five different pins involved in it. Four for selecting the address of the particular channel and one for taking the actual input. So in case we need to take more than 16 inputs, we need to increase the number of address pins. So that was not the proper way to get the unlimited input pins for any microcontroller board, but I got something really interesting and useful for you guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you one technique to get unlimited number of input pins by just using four GPIO pins of any microcontroller board. Yes just four GPIO pins for unlimited binary inputs and in this video I'll also be showing a short demo of how to achieve that goal using a parallel in serial out shift resistor. So now before moving ahead if you are watching me for the very first time well consider subscribing this channel right now as you're definitely losing a lot of interesting and educational content in the field of electronics, IoT and home automation. Well, that being said, let us start with how to get unlimited input pins by just using 4 GPIO pins. Like 4 GPIO pins. This video is because these are logics are Let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now, if I tell you one very interesting feature of this software, then here in LTM Designer, you can design rigid flex PCB. Now, what is that? So till now, you must have designed the PCB, which has like rigid, like solid PCBs that we are not able to bend. But here in LTM, you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid, solid, and some of the parts are flexible, which can bend. And the PCB can, you know, uh, we can bend it in a two-fold manner, just like the modern day smartphone, right? So this is a really very interesting, useful, and unique feature of the software. Well, you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on the link, you'll get access to the free trial version of this software. So go ahead, try out the free trial version of LTM designer software. Okay, so now to achieve our goal for getting unlimited inputs, we'll be using this 74165 IC, which is a parallel in serial out shift resistor. Well, now those who don't know what actually a shift register is, well, kindly watch out my previous video, which was about getting unlimited outputs using 74595 IC. And in that video, I discussed about what is shift register and what are different kinds of shift registers that are available in the market. So do watch out that video. The link is down in the description of this video. And now if I tell you what exactly a parallel in serial out shift register is, then first it will take the inputs from all the pins simultaneously and store it inside its built-in register and after that it will transmit the data at the output serially one by one based upon the clock signal. So that's how we can take multiple inputs and transmit them serially using one single pin using this kind of shift register. So after knowing about how this shift register work, let us practically test it out and for testing it out we'll be using a 74165 IC, couple of push buttons, couple of pull up resistors and a node MCU board and will be making their connections according to this connection diagram. So after the connection, now let's just have a look over the coding part of the project. So here inside the code, we are using the four different pins, shift load, clock enable, data and clock. Now I'll discuss the importance and use case of each of the pin while explaining the code. So in the setup part, we are beginning the serial monitor and after that we are also declaring the input output using the pin mode function. Okay. Now inside the loop part, first of all, we are giving pulse to the shift load pin. That means we are turning it low and for a very short time period, uh, we are giving a delay and after that we are making it high once again. So we are giving a, you know, short pulse. Now why it is important? Well, the shift load pin, like giving a pulse to the shift load pin will take all the inputs from the input pin and it will store it inside the register of the shift resistor IC. Okay. So that's why giving a pulse to shift load is important to read the data. And after that, what we are doing is we are, uh, you know, making the clock pin high and also the clock enable pin low. Now, first of all, what is the clock enable pin? Now, as the name suggests, this pin will enable the clock signal. Okay. So we are making it low because this pin is an active low pin. Okay. So to enable the clock, we need to make this pin low. And after that, we need to make the clock pin high for the very first time. And if we don't do that, we may lose the first data bit inside the byte. Okay. So make that clock pin high for the very first time. After that, using the shift in function, we are getting the data through the data pin based upon 
upon the clock using the clock pane and we are taking the data with LSB first sequence. After that, we are making the clock enable pin high. That means we are turning off the clock and straight after that, we are printing all the data that we received serially in the serial monitor. So that's the basic code to read the data of all the eight pins or we can say the reading data of a single byte and printing it through a serial monitor using the single data pin. Let us upload this code and see how it works. So as you can see, whichever button is pressed, its respective bit is turning low and not only that, I can even press multiple buttons at a time and as you can see, we are getting the data of multiple pins at the same time. So that's the beauty of this parallel in serial out shift register and it doesn't stop here. We can even cascade this kind of shift register to take maybe 16 or 32 or maybe unlimited number of inputs using just 4 GPIO pins. Yes, we can do that of course using that and let me show you a demo by taking the 16 different inputs using the same 4 GPIO pins and for that you need to make the connections of all the components according to this connection diagram. So in the connection we are basically providing the output of the first IC to the input of the second IC and now if you look at the code carefully then everything is pretty much the same except this two line. So here what we are doing is we have declared two different incoming variables and we are storing each byte in the particular variable. Okay, so with this two variable we can uh, store two different bytes of data ultimately 16 bits and with this we can get the data of 16 different outputs or the inputs on the serial monitor. Okay, so now let's upload this code and see the result on the serial monitor. So here as you can see, I'm able to read the data of all the 16 buttons on the serial monitor simultaneously. Superb, right? So this will definitely help us to solve the lack of input pins in any of your project using any of the microcontroller board. Isn't this an amazing logic? Well, do click the like button if you really like the concept and the logic that we use to increase the number of input pins. Okay, so now if I tell you one drawback about this IC, then here using this IC, you will only be able to read the binary data either 0 or 1. In case you want to attach any analog sensor with it, well, you won't be able to use this IC. Well, in that case, like for reading analog sensors data, you can go for that MUX DMUX IC that we have discussed before. That IC can handle or rather that can read both analog and digital input. But as I said earlier, that will require more number of GPIO pins as compared to the 74165. So it's totally up to you and your application. And as we are talking about the application, well, we are definitely planning to use this IC for our upcoming project. So subscribe this channel to know what that upcoming project is and also subscribe it right now to make us reach that 100k mark as soon as possible. Also do share your comments, ideas and feedback regarding this IC and also let us know in the comments about were you aware about this IC before watching this video or not. Do share your thoughts down in the comments of the video and yeah, that was it about this video. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something new from it. Well yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one and explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.